Juan Andrade. Um, welcome and uh, thanks very much for your time uh, for giving us this interview. You're welcome. Um, so I was doing some research into uh, Juan Andrade before this interview and uh, a lot of the interviews that I found were in Portuguese. So I actually don't have a huge <laughs> amount of background information on you. So I think where we should start is talking a little bit about um, how you got into surfing. You know, did you, did you grow up in the area and, and surf from a young age or was it yeah I start story? very young actually when I start was not a, a normal sport it was like my parents hate to, to do the thing I, I do because it was like considered like a, a marginal, marginal sport yeah. Yeah, yeah. like everybody smoking drinking taking drugs so it was not easy to to start this sport but I don't know I think it was lucky I was get it good and the first the first years I, I went to competitions, I get it like the first place. Um, it was a natural career. I started to compete, I started to win. And yeah, and how can I explain? It just sort of evolved from there. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah all my life I was surfing. And one moment I remember to go to Nazare and see like Garrett catching like the huge waves and say, whoa, I want to do this. Yeah. I want to try. And everybody was like, are you crazy, Joanna? Yeah. This is too much. You, yeah. <laughs> nothing is too much. The limits yeah. is what you, what we create. Yeah. And I start to training. I make like a course of uh, Resgat, Jets Resgat. Start to driving a jet ski. And I was lucky. And I start, they start to push me. And the first wave I get it in Nazare was like a huge wave, so I went straight to the the Shishizel. <laughs> <laughs> it was like when I saw like the wave, I was like, no, this is me, no yeah. way. But for me, it's like it's competing different of normal surf. For yeah. me, it's like the pushing the extreme and deal with the demons we have inside of us, yeah. and to to explore a little bit our limits yeah. and for telling the truth I learned a lot about myself yeah. doing these big ways because yeah. you need to your mind your body and your soul have to fix together yeah. they've played together yeah <laughs> it's great you actually touch on that because that's kind of where I wanted to take the, the conversation <laughs> was um, you know I think there's a lot of talk about the physical side of surfing and and people learning from you know how you do a top turn how you do a bottom turn mm -hmm. the kind of physical side but what people don't talk about so much is it's the mental side. Mental. You know, it's the very important. Side. For yeah. me, it's the most important. Yeah. Because you need to have like a big preparation before you go to these extreme waves. Yeah, totally. You know, yeah. you need to you need to listen your body. You need to listen your instincts, and you need to be confident by yourself. You know. Yeah. And before this, uh, like a lot of preparation with uh, therapeutics, psychologic persons who help you to to deal with the fear because yeah. I always say fear and panic they are two different feelings the fear the fear it's good to have everyone have in a relationships in the life we, we deal with the fear every day but with panic we can kill they can kill us yeah. panic can kill yeah. and we, if we get it in panic we block yeah. and this is the process we, we need to we work a lot yeah. and we work a lot when we when we fall in a hype out we need to relax and we need to um, to believe and we need to trust in the universe or God. We need to just relax yeah. and don't think in nothing. Yeah. Otherwise, we like the demons come inside of you and yeah. it's like it's a nightmare. Yeah. So it's interesting you say um, when you talk about fear, you talk about separating fear and panic mm -hmm. because one of my topics I wanted to talk to you about was fear and I feel like um, no matter whether you're a beginner surfer or whether you're an intermediate surfer like I am and you're stepping up into you know for you probably quite small waves but for me you know I'm quite thinking about double overhead that scares me right of course so I mean one of my questions was going to be um, how do you deal with the fear but actually what you're kind of suggesting is that there's nothing wrong with having fear it's, it's more about wrong. dealing exactly. with the it's good consequences of fear exactly guess, it's so. good to have everybody have fear yeah. I have fear when yeah. I go to the water, or it have to be sometimes it's small and I'm I'm fear, or because of the rocks, or because of the shape of the wave, it's good to have. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's inside of us, but and it is is uh, is good. Everyone have when they go to the water because we need to respect 
Yeah. Because we not in, it's not our element. Yeah. Water, you know, you, you go to another, <laughs> another many, dimension. Many <laughs> yeah. So it's good. But yeah. you need to trust in you and trust. And, and what I say to my students and what I say to myself is, is just put in my mind, is, it says it's just water, nothing going to happen. If you can hold your breath like one minute, one minute and a half, you can do big waves. Just yeah. relax and enjoy the washing machine. <laughs> you know, and it's true. If you start to fight, we cannot fight with uh, water. We cannot fight with uh, fire. So we just need to, yeah, give. <laughs> so I mean, that's fantastic. I mean, it, that's really built upon your experience looking back across your career, I presume. But what I'd like to do is, um, I'd like to take you back to before you were surfing big waves mm -hmm. and when you were when you were making that progression into surfing Nazare and, mm -hmm. and becoming a world-renowned big wave surfer. Um, what was that process like to go from, um, and presumably a, a very competent surfer as a, as a young surfer, but to start to explore size of wave and power of wave and, and to start to deal with your own um, emotions, your own self-belief, your own fear, um, can you describe what that process was like? Because I think in a way that's what a lot of us well, are going through. I think everybody born with a gift or um, something he likes, you know. Um, since young I, I always liked big waves. Yeah. I don't know, I grew up like this, you know. And some people they don't like big waves, you know. And you have to respect this. The big waves are not for everyone. But you have to come from inside of you, yeah. you know. But I start step by step you know like one time i get it more big and big and big and big but since i remember i start to surf i never i always like to explore a little bit the limits yeah. of myself <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> I, I find it that one um so it sounds like you it was quite progressive yeah. actually stepping up to it was nazare uh, uh, more of a, a leap than you've done before. I mean, I know there is some big. I mean, Pride for in Norte, me, for example. For me, I tell Nazaré for me is like uh, the monster. You know, I never yeah. see like uh, the big waves like Nazaré because they have so much power, yeah. so much aggressive, and you know, f the insides there is like animal. <laughs> is there an animal? I actually went there the, the first went. time. So you, there. you yeah, know, so I've seen it and it scared so me. From the rocks. It scared yeah. me. For me too, yeah. and I tell every time I go to there, the, the, the day before I cannot sleep. I yeah. have like a lot of monkeys inside of me, yeah. say, should I go, should I not? Yeah. You stupid, uh, you you know, <laughs> nice, like it's a big process. Yeah. But like I tell you, I don't know, it's coming from inside of me. Yeah. It's like it's a desire, to a desire is like a, a, something yeah. I cannot uh, explain you. It's yeah. like a, a feeling. Yeah. <laughs> So you, you kind of touched on it there as well, which is this idea of, of self-belief yeah. and self-doubt. Well, I imagine pretty much every surfer has this, is that when you're stepping up to that next level, you, you have to deal with your own self-belief and, and more importantly, you have to deal with your own self-doubt. And um, you need I just, to trust. <laughs> you've got to trust that you, you know, it's very easy to think to yourself, um, I just don't have the skill, you know, I don't have the level to be able to be but here. This and, is like the mind, our yeah. mind, are sometimes is our enemy yeah. because your mind we have like so many Joannas inside and you have so many Johnsons <laughs> inside of you of course yeah. the mind is always going to tell you ah but you're not good enough to do this ah but your body uh, is not telling this ah but you drink the other day so f be careful and, and of course your mind is going to do this it's yeah. the normal in life sometimes when you're driving when you go to a job or when you met the girl or oh, man oh <laughs> <laughs> your mind gets put you a lot of uh, blocks yeah. in you. I think it's like you need to listen the voice inside of you and listen and take care and listen just a beautiful voice, not the many voices we have inside, but the one you think yeah. this is the true, not the one going put you always down, 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 down. Because yeah. we have a lot, always a voice put you yeah. put us always down. Don't listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess it's a little bit like... Because we are superhumans. <laughs> we yeah, can no, do absolutely. everything we want. <laughs> Maybe one day we can fly. <laughs> <laughs> what if we jump from that? No. <laughs> um, so it sounds like your, you know, your process is a bit like having, you know, it is accepting that those voices are going to be there, that fear is going to be there. And it's about, it's about rationalizing with those voices. Mm -hmm. It's about having that conversation when you're surfing and, 
and kind of being being sure about what that true voice is. Um, but how much of that is being sure that you, you know, I, I imagine there's a sort of there's a danger where you think, okay, there's there's something that I want to achieve, and I'm going to listen to that rather than listening to say the true voice, which might be telling you, actually, Joanna, this probably isn't a very good idea. But there must be always that balance of sort of. It's always the balance, yeah. but it's always breathe in, breathe out. Yeah. With your breath, you go calm. And like I tell you, every every sport people they like to to push the limits. Yeah. So. And you certainly okay. do that in surfing. That's yeah, true. but I tell you, it's all about breathing, and it's all is about trust. Yeah. You know, of course, I I, I speak better to do, huh? Because mm. sometimes I'm like, what I'm doing? Yeah. Uh, a lot of situation I'm paddle out and say, Juan, are you crazy? What are you doing here? <laughs> but after I, I start to breathe in, breathe out, say calm, everything's okay, nothing's going to happen. You are safe, trust, trust in the universe. This is my, this is my work. Yeah. You know, every people have different kind of work. Of course, the physical it's very important, but I think the psychological is the most important thing. Yeah. And yeah, it's like it's like a day when you wake up and you feel good, happy. The day go amazing. If you wake up yeah. like uh, angry, na na na, you gonna see your day is not gonna be so good. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> the yeah. surf is exactly the same. Why everybody surf? Yeah. Because for me, I think for me, I think surf is for everyone. Doesn't yeah. matter if you are a beginner, if you are an adventurer, if you ask. I think for me, surf is like a, a lifestyle. Mm. And like a, a, mid, a medicina, mm. because it's true. When you go to the water, you forget everything. You are in yeah. a moment. You clean. Yeah. You you deal with yourself. Yeah. It's a it's yeah, a sport. Yeah. You you be with you and with the waves. Yeah. And you have to speak with you yeah. about. Ah, I'm going to catch this one. Ah, but if I start to pedal and uh, uh, if I fall, for sure you're going to fall. Yeah. If you're going to thought, uh, if your thoughts going to be like this, you're going to fall. Yeah. <laughs> But there's something that you're sort of you're starting to get into there, which is um, expectation. For, for Joanna Andrade, the expectation, I suppose, having got to the essentially the pinnacle of, of surfing. I mean, you're one of few women in the world who have surfed Nazare, for example. Um, how do you deal with your own expectation for what you should achieve versus just going out surfing and enjoying the day? I think I don't make too much expectation. I just go and enjoy the day. Of course, I'm going always catching the bigger wave, but I don't think too much. I just no. think, okay, let's go, let's go enjoy, let's go catch some good waves. If it happens, it happens. If it happens, it happens. If we're not, not <laughs> go with the flow. <laughs> yeah. So um, just to sort of round off the interview a little bit, we're we're now in October. Um, mm -hmm. November's coming up. October, November is the classic big wave yes. season for Nazare. So. You're training a lot at the moment yeah. for hopefully some big swells <laughs> to come through over the next two months. Um, can you talk a little bit about what your training involves and what you're doing physically okay. to prepare yourself? My training involves, um, I'm, I'm doing like with the uh, waves crashing with uh, Jojo from Praia Grande. It's like a training in a swinging pool. It's like imagining a, a, a gym, but under the water, you know? <laughs> so every yeah. exercise you do is without air and yeah. in water. Yeah, it's no. like when you go <laughs> deep and you stay, hold your breath, and you you stay there, okay, without air. Like and I do, yeah, time. and I do a lot of uh, yoga. Okay. Uh, and I have like uh, some people working with me in coaching, yeah. like guide me the mind, like I tell you the monkeys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the psychologic people too working with me too. Okay, cool. Yeah. And you mentioned bef before we had the interview that you were going to head out to Nazare and and get in the water in Nazare on a, on a not necessarily a huge day, but yeah. how important is in-water training? Of course, because we need to train, because f f like you know, the waves is always different. The, the ocean is always different, so it's good to, to go in small days just to work, just to put the board in, in your feet, like driving a little bit the, the jet ski. So it's not just the big days we go there. We yeah. have to go there a lot of times to understand the wave, to feel confident, yeah. to to trust in us, you know. Otherwise, like making a cake without uh, <laughs> milk. <laughs> it's a good analogy. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, brings us to the end of the the interview. So yeah. thank you very thank much you. for your time, and uh, I wish you all pleasure. the best with the uh, with the season this season. And uh, yeah, and I hope it goes well. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>